drugs, and talk about sex, and you can talk about rock and roll. I'll talk about the rock and roll. It's all the fun stuff. <laughs> all stereotypes are based in some sort of reality. We all have stories that we feel ashamed about, but we all have stories. We all have those things that we're like, ooh. And when you share those ooh stories, it gives other people permission. This woman who you've witnessed, her sharing her story is helping you give yourself permission to share your story. Mm. Like, is it taboo because mainstream media says things are taboo? Is it taboo because we don't know how to be authentic? Taboo make us a little more edgy. What would happen if we just said fuck it to the idea of taboo and just were ourselves? Hi, I'm Sterling. Welcome to my channel. It's all about the exploratory, and I'm really big on sharing stories. Subscribe for good vibes! Perfume! I had no idea you were here alone. I am here with the donkeys, snoring in the corner. Feel free to continue playing while we talk. Okay. So, let's touch on what we were talking about when I realized that the camera had died. <laughs> Which is, um, <laughs> that we both have stories that we want to tell mm -hmm. and that we feel are important to sh tell and that we will feel really actualized and able to integrate by sharing with people mm -hmm. but we are also both concerned about what the people we know will think of those stories mm -hmm. so we know we need to tell the stories to people who need to know them mm -hmm. and then there are people we know who we don't necessarily want to tell the stories to. Yes. And that's an interesting situation. <laughs> How do you grapple with feeling the need and urge to tell the stories but are afraid of having your story received by all? Exactly. Because like, you can't pinpoint specific people to receive the story when you put it out into the world. Exactly. You have to you, you share your story and essentially you're letting go of control of a piece of yourself. Yeah. Sending it all like having a baby and raising it and then going. Okay, go be an autonomous being now, completely out of my supervision, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> what I've been doing is sharing edgy stories along the same vein, but not the story, and noticing how my body really responds. It's really right. scary. So I was gonna say, oh, I, I thought you were gonna say, and noticing how people respond. Oh. But you took it in a much more important direction, really, <laughs> noticing how you personally in your body respond right. to the feeling of sharing those things. Right, because I don't have any control over how others will respond, and there's a very big possibility that I will trigger others, but it comes down to how I respond to their response and whether or not I take it personally. Right. Because wow. that's the caveat is, like, do you take their experience personally if they're reacting because they took your experience personally right, exactly oh humans so silly there's a story time youtuber who many people absolutely adore and watch often and by the measures of how i define success she seems very successful she seems genuine she seems honest when i watch her stories i feel like she's being very real and her stories are intense that's how i've ended up watching them because she has subject matter in her stories that is edgy mm. and raw and intense and you know counter indicative of mainstream culture counterculture stuff and a lot of the stories that i want to tell are so I, I watch her stories i see like oh how much is she sharing and i realized after a while of seeing some of her stories that she was in the porn industry mm. and which is like a big trigger thing for people and usually something that you know, people want to keep separate from their life after being involved in the sex industry and not everyone can talk openly about it and so to do it on such a huge platform as YouTube and to have millions of subscribers and millions of views on these videos, I was like really impressed when I realized that because she doesn't wear it like a flag. Like, this is me, I am this thing, define me like this. But it is a story that is impacted. The rest of her stories and her reality and so I, I really respected that that she was managing to continue to be what I perceived as so honest with that being one of her stories because that is a thing that she probably didn't want to share with everyone in the world well the truth is is that we all have stories that we feel ashamed about or, or don't want to share but we all have stories 
every single human has a story, whether or not they want to share it or not, but we all have those things that we're like, ooh. And when you share those ooh stories, it gives other people permission to share their stories as well. So this woman who you've witnessed sounds to me like her sharing her story is in a way helping you give yourself permission to share your story. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the stories that I really feel inclined to share and that her subject matter has made me feel more free and able and given me permission to share is a story that you and I share, Um. which is a story that you want to tell, (laughs) which is similar to other stories that you tell regularly as a business. Right. And that you're not quite ready to tell, but it's a story that so many people can relate to and that so many people need to hear because it's something that is taboo to be talked about in our culture and especially among certain family members of ours. But it is something that is so key to be discussing in the current cultural climate mm-hmm. because it's real and so many people have similar stories. Yeah, this concept of taboo, I've been really working with recently like why is it taboo like Mm. is it taboo because mainstream media says things are taboo is it taboo because we are founded in puritan ethics yes is it taboo (laughs) because we don't know how to be authentic and so the things that are considered taboo make us a little more edgy I'm not sure. Like, this this idea of taboo I've been sitting with a lot recently. What would happen if we just said fuck it to the idea of taboo and just were ourselves? Right. And it touches on the conversation we were having earlier, which was misuse and misappropriation of certain words that have a very specific meaning in a very specific culture and then have just been massively generalized it. Taboo is one of those words. Right. Taboo has a specific meaning, and I don't even know exactly which culture it is that it comes from, but it has this very broad and general use now, which might be why we don't even know what it exactly means or why things are taboo, because we don't actually know the cultural context of what taboo is and the power of that word. Like the way I hear taboo, I hear wrong. Right. Like, or shame. Yeah. Or danger. Bad. Yeah. It's very uh, polarizing. Mm-hmm. And it's usually, for me, about something that I'm intrigued by or interested in, but someone else might not accept or will right. perceive differently. And one of that I just thought of is that everything that's taboo is what makes a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Like the drug industry, like the sex industry. Fetishes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else is taboo? Tattoos. Tattoos. Piercings. Body modification in general. Right. People with outrageous religious beliefs uh-huh. or spiritual beliefs or discussing them in general. Yeah, that's true. So maybe they don't want us to talk about the taboo because they... Because there's power there? Yeah. <laughs> They've capitalized on As it. indicated by money? Right. money is power and so much as money is currency like Mm -hmm. electrical power (laughs) yeah that's interesting sharing these taboo stories everybody has taboo stories right even the people who say they don't have taboo stories have taboo stories because it's all about perspective right and like who is defining what is taboo and what is acceptable because the things that you and I talk about aren't normal Except that they're normal in the conversations that we have and the people we surround ourselves with, right. but they're not mainstream. Right. And could be construed as very taboo. Does mainstream just mean homogenous? I just had that thought. Mainstream, the way that I understand it, is I take it as like a... a, a, a this might be an oxymoron. As a literal metaphor. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I am a literal metaphor. So if you think about a river, mm-hmm. and you think about wow. all the streams all the, that run into the river, all the creeks, all the different water and runoff that comes from different places to fall into this river to create this watershed, right. there is the river that is the main stream. Okay. Most of the water is there. The current is moving faster. It's pushing all of these things along with it. And when a tiny river comes, it might be coming from a completely different direction and carrying a different kind of water or a different speed or pace of flow. And when it hits the mainstream, it's going to immediately fall in line with the mainstream. Right. Because 
the mainstream is powerful and bigger, and it is the right. mainstream. It is most of the flow is there. It's not negative. It's just the majority. Right, the majority. Most of the water is moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the mainstream might split, or like certain rivers will come off of it again. It's not like once something is mainstream, it will always be mainstream. Right, it's not right. the way that water moves. Right. Hmm. Just trying to now imagine how taboo fits into that metaphor. Like, is taboo a little stream? that we try to dam and not allow into the mainstream? I think it could be that, and I think it could also be that place where there's the rapids or a waterfall, <laughs> and then there's the undercurrent. Oh, yeah. Like, you can get sucked down, and the water's deeper than it looks, and so the main, the river keeps flowing over the top, but there's actually this spot that's really deep and pulling against <laughs> that current. Right. And, and no one wants to talk about that. You're not supposed to float that way because it's called the Widowmaker, and it'll right. suck you under the rock. And all the silt is all churned yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So those are the undercurrents. Right. <laughs> so how do we give ourselves permission to talk about these taboo things? I mean, I think we just have to give ourselves permission. Right. And, and whatever the process is for that. For me, it's been like seeing these other people's videos that are really inspiring because they're being so honest about things that I perceive as what might trigger someone else. I'm not triggered by someone having worked in the sex industry. I, I have respect for people that are open or confident enough to work in the sex industry, but I know that the sex industry is a trigger point right. for mainstream society, or at least I perceive it as something that might be. So then that encourages me. She also talks about her experience with drugs uh -huh. and stuff like that. Other things that are taboo or illegal or blah, blah, blah. Witnessing someone else do it and being accepted and received and witnessed and successful by my definition gives me more courage to be able to do that. It gives me permission. It feels like I'm giving permission. And then like having you here and talking about our stories and watching our videos, having the acknowledgement that those things, <laughs> those things really happen, even if they're not like other stories that people have where someone might judge me for it or right. maybe they weren't the most legal of activities. It doesn't mean that they're not valid stories to be told. Right. That doesn't mean that there aren't people that would benefit from hearing it. It doesn't right. mean that I wouldn't benefit from sharing it. Right. Mm. Yeah, I know, and everything that I've been doing in the past year or so, I wrote my thesis, master's thesis, about psilocybin mushrooms, and me talking about that taboo subject of psychedelic plants, I remember how much fear I had even just telling my parents that that is what the subject matter was. and That might be the scariest part. Yeah, but I saw this um, video of Will Smith talking about his experience going skydiving and how he said one drunken night, he just, him and his friends were like, we're ready to skydiving. And so he went to bed and all throughout the night, he'd like wake up like panicking. Like, I'm gonna jump out of a plane tomorrow. I'm gonna jump out of a plane tomorrow. <laughs> And all the morning he goes down and he's like, oh, yep, we're actually jumping out of a plane in a few hours. And like getting to the airport and putting on the suits. Like, shit, I'm going to jump out of a plane. And just feeling sick to your stomach and like really freaking out. And then you're in the plane and you're like, oh my God, I'm in the plane. I'm going to jump out of the plane. And then they open up the doors and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to jump out of the plane. And they say, oh and then on two they push you because otherwise if you go to three I guess people will grip on and he said in that moment right before they fell out was the worst fear he's ever felt in his life but as soon as he was out the plane he said it was just like complete bliss and all that fear that had been building up to that one moment was for nothing and that once he was actually out of the plane it was amazing and he felt so free and so good and it was just like this ecstatic experience and so the moral of the story is always the mind and the lead up before you jump out of the plane that is the worst but as soon as you jump and as soon as you make that leap like it's already happened it already is happening and you can't do anything about it and then it's done and so yeah. it's literally it's like crossing that threshold of not doing it into doing it like that is the because it takes so much energy to control the maybe and the what if and right. the feelings and the build up right. and the blah 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 and then once you've actually jumped you're like well there's nothing I can do now yeah. except be right here right falling through the sky right and then and then people witness you jumping and like this woman you watch on YouTube 
then others will be grateful for your jump as well. And that's the response that I got from doing my thesis on psilocybin mushrooms and depression, and even like talking about women's health and the cervix and menstrual blood. You know, it's really scary stuff to talk about these things that are taboo, but making that leap and having other people witness you in that leap, it then gives them permission to make that leap too. And maybe the more we talk about it, the less taboo it is? Yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, it's not like this secret, hidden, dark thing. And the conversations need to happen. Yeah, so when are we going to talk about our most, I was going to say like most taboo story. Is that most taboo? I don't know. I think that's a personal judgment call. I guess so. I have a laundry list of taboo stories. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, what is it what I consider the most taboo right. story? Is it what I think someone else will consider the most taboo story? Is it what I think certain people will consider right. the most taboo story? But taboo in the very general way that we're using it right now. Oh, oh I have so many taboo <laughs> but I know the one you're referring to yeah. because we share it. We do. And it's not just one story. No. <laughs> it, a is, of us. it is a topic <laughs> of which there are multiple stories. I don't know. At some point. I know. Yeah, for me, really, the only the fear comes from my family. Right, because you know them, so you have the very high likelihood of experiencing their reaction. Right. Right. Whereas other people that would potentially be triggered by the taboo subject matter, you don't know them. Their judgment won't affect you. Right. Their feelings that come up are their feelings that come up for them to process, and you won't necessarily experience it directly. Right. But family, you see them. <laughs> and you've had a lot of time since the story subject matter happened to build right. up the reasons why you haven't shared the story with them, how you feel about the right. fact that you haven't shared the story with them. This makes me have a lot of compassion for people who come out with being gay. Yeah. Or uh, having an addiction problem. Right. right. Yeah. That's definitely. A lot of compassion. Scary. You Just all rock. <laughs> you very, know. Brave. Mm -hmm. very brave. Very brave. Mm-hmm. Mm. All of that. Anytime that anyone has a secret that they're afraid to share. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, you know, like, the... The, the people that we're concerned about hearing the stories are probably not going to have the kind of reactions that would lead to any harm of right. anyone or right. anything drastic besides maybe hurt feelings. Right. Or like a change of perspective, but it doesn't even have to be negative. It could just be like, oh, that's what you're going through then. And something I've noticed also is like when I put a lot of weight on something and then I share it with someone, they might not really have an adverse reaction at all, or they already know. Right. They're like, yeah, I can't have it. And then it's really just about me and like, oh, okay, so that <laughs> big lead up to telling you this story was actually all about me working through my shit. Right. And had nothing to do with you because you already knew or don't care. Or care in a really nice, benign way. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I'm getting there. I'm on the path to sharing the taboo. Been sharing more and more taboo. You're pretty much building an entire reality around the future I know, of sharing that's true. it. And it's like, yeah, obviously you're gonna do that. <laughs> so I had a friend who was like, like you know, you talk about drugs, Woo! you talk about sex, and you talk about rock and roll. I'll talk about the rock and roll. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> it's all the fun stuff. <laughs> all stereotypes are based in some sort of reality. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All the fun stuff. Also all the really intense stuff. Yeah. For any of you that are interested in the lessons that I've learned through trial and a lot of error, check out the link in the description box down below where I share my tips and tricks. Thanks for making space in your brain for this video. Hit the thumbs up, share to someone you care for, subscribe for goodbye. Ring my bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. Leave a comment down below. You can come find me on social media at Sterling Mariah or Snap into the main